When enemy bombers crater every runway or missions demand landing and jungle clearings, conventional aircraft become useless. Throughout military history, select warbirds rewrote the rules using engineering brilliance and pilot courage. Welcome to No Runway, No Problem, the first stole warbirds. Imagine landing a military aircraft on a dirt road barely wider than your wingspan while enemy forces close in from both sides. This wasn't science fiction during Cold War tactical operations, but daily reality for pilots flying one of Italy's most secretive liaison aircraft. The Sci-I Marchetti SM-1019 takes the tactical liaison anywhere philosophy to extremes never imagined in conventional military aviation. The airframe inherits bird dog concepts, but replaces piston power with Allison 250 turbine, gaining instantaneous power response, smoothness, and reliability for aggressive approach profiles onto dirt strips, gravel surfaces, and improvised roadways. In short, takeoff and landing operations, continuous power availability and fine torque control allow pilots to hold weight suspended in air during short finals while adjusting touchdown points with surgical precision. The high wing configuration employs full span flaps with generous deflection angles and substantial wingspan to lower reference velocity, while maintaining aileron authority at speeds that would stall conventional aircraft. Tall, wide stance landing gear with long travel shock absorption accepts firm touchdowns and surface irregularities without transmitting destructive peak loads through wing spars. The large diameter propeller with effective beta range transforms into potent aerodynamic brake immediately after touchdown shortening ground roll without abusing wheel brakes that would fail under sustained high energy stops requiring maintenance intervention. In operational environments, the 1019 enters clearings, pastures, and secondary roads where helicopters would prove expensive and time-consuming alternatives for forward air control, light search and rescue, or fire coordination missions. The tandem cockpit configuration provides exemplary visibility for observer duties while keeping empty weight minimal for maximum short field performance. Maintenance priorities focus on landing gear integrity, high flotation tire condition, and blade state in foreign object damage environments that destroy propellers and turbine intakes with equal enthusiasm. Low empty weight and contained wing loading enable takeoffs in 500 to 650 feet, and landings in even shorter distances with beta range propeller provided center of gravity and wind remain within approved envelope. But if you thought turbine power solved all short field challenges, prepare to meet the aircraft that wrote the clandestine operations handbook. Picture yourself flying into Nazi-occupied France under cover of darkness with only a handheld flashlight marking your landing zone in a farmer's muddy field. One British aircraft made this suicidal mission routine, rescuing Allied agents from under the Gestapo's nose with a landing performance that defied every rule of conventional aviation. The Westland Lysander stands as the icon of clandestine operations throughout occupied Europe during World War II, dropping agents into moonlit pastures and retrieving them under conditions no conventional aircraft could attempt. Its secret lies in hyperlift aerodynamics featuring automatic leading edge slats delaying flow separation and large area flaps simultaneously increasing camber and effective wing area, elevating maximum lift coefficient without creating treacherous behavior near stall speeds. The high wing configuration liberates visual field for landings and pastures and clearings at night where the only reference might be a covered lantern and a section of fence barely visible through darkness. The fared landing gear with generous shock absorption tolerates planted touchdowns reduces structural damage from rough field operations, and maintains directional control on gravel surfaces that would ground lesser aircraft immediately. The Bristol Mercury radial engine provides immediate torque for short go-arounds and power reapplication after firm touchdowns, requiring instant decisions. Operational philosophy depended on steep approaches at speeds barely above stall, precise touchdown placement, and minimal roll using heavy braking and tail-down attitude that modern safety officers would consider borderline suicidal but wartime necessity demanded without question. For special operations executive infiltration and exfiltration missions, the aircraft carried minimal cargo, prioritizing landing and takeoff distance over payload capacity or range considerations. Performance tables were conservative, but the Lysander operated at limits, demanding disciplined pilots who accepted narrow margins to complete missions, others considered impossible or suicidal depending on perspective and risk tolerance. Practical result delivered true short field performance below 800 feet in light configuration with operational reliability, transforming the Lysander into the gold standard for clandestine aviation throughout the war. While the Lysander mastered night operations in occupied territory, post-war developments would bring modern aerodynamics to the short field battlefield. What happens when German engineers apply cutting edge supercritical wing technology to bush plane operations? The answer revolutionized regional aviation in places where paved runways exist only in pilot fantasies and government promises. 
Modern aerodynamics met third world reality in an unlikely marriage that proved skeptics wrong on every continent. The Dornier 228 introduces supercritical T and T wing technology into the short field universe, bridging the gap between wartime expedience and modern computational aerodynamics that revolutionized transport category aircraft performance. The airfoil offers reduced drag during cruise while maintaining elevated lift coefficient in flap deflected configurations without abrupt behavior approaching stall speeds that kill pilots who become complacent. Box bar structure delivers rigidity and tolerance for cyclic loads typical of rough strip operations where every landing tests structural integrity and reveals maintenance shortcuts taken by previous operators. With Garrett or PT6A turboprops featuring effective reverse thrust, the 228 transforms kinetic energy into propulsive braking immediately after touchdown, reducing landing roll on strips measuring 1,450 to 1,950 feet in light configuration. Tall landing gear with anti-skid systems and tires dimensioned for gravel operations support steep descents with firm touchdowns that would overstress conventional regional aircraft. The rectangular fuselage maximizes usable volume while facilitating multi-mission conversions, including maritime patrol, search and rescue, remote sensing, and regional stall transport connecting communities conventional airlines ignore. Performance depends critically on mass, temperature, and field elevation variables that crews must calculate precisely before every takeoff and landing attempt. Field maintenance focuses on landing gear integrity, blade erosion from foreign object damage, and flap seal condition maintaining trailing edge efficiency that separates advertised performance from embarrassing reality when inspectors arrive. The result delivers a fast, economical, and rugged platform for routes where conventional regional aircraft demand long asphalt runways unavailable in developing regions or remote locations. The DU-228 proved that modern aerodynamic technology and STOL operations not only coexist, but actually enhance each other when properly integrated. German engineering solved one approach to short field performance, but Eastern European designers took an entirely different philosophical path. When Soviet engineers were told to design an aircraft capable of serving villages where the only flat surface was a cow pasture, they didn't complain about impossible requirements. They built a flying truck that laughed at conditions grounding everything else while costing less than helicopter fuel. This Ukrainian workhorse transformed isolated communities into connected civilization using nothing but enormous wings and peasant simplicity. The Antonov AN-28 bets everything on extremely low wing loading and massive wing area to fly slowly with total control authority that defies physics textbooks. Deep deflection flaps and generous control surfaces maintain authority until very near stall speeds, permitting slow approaches and precise touchdowns that put the aircraft exactly where pilots intend rather than where momentum dictates. Large diameter propellers with beta range and balloon type tires combine for operations on wet grass, dirt, and gravel surfaces that would bog conventional aircraft until spring thaw arrives. Tall landing gear absorbs sink rates and irregularities without punishing the airframe or sending maintenance costs through budgets already stretched impossibly thin by post-Soviet economic reality. In stall technique, pilots maintain residual power during short final to sustain weight and air touch at the planned point, and apply beta or reverse thrust immediately while minimizing ground roll that eats precious runway nobody has anyway. With modest engines, the N28 demands absolute respect for density altitude and weight because climb gradient collapses in heat like political promises after elections. In parachute operations, medical evacuation, and regional connections, the aircraft replaces expensive helicopters with operating costs, so low accountants think the numbers contain errors. Maintenance and field conditions values easy access to control cables flap articulations, and shock absorbers, while anti-corrosion treatment proves crucial on wet strips where rust never sleeps and inspectors rarely visit. In numbers, 980 to 1300 feet takeoff and 820 to 1150 feet, landing in light configuration with safety margins, built for reality, not fantasy. While the Soviets mastered practical simplicity, Canadian engineers were designing something that seemed physically impossible. Try explaining to physics professors how an aircraft weighing over 20,000 pounds can land on grass strips shorter than a typical city block. They'll tell you it violates fundamental principles until you show them the de Havilland Canada miracle that made cargo helicopters obsolete across three continents. This beast proved that, with enough engineering audacity, runways become optional equipment rather than mandatory infrastructure. The DHC-5 Buffalo represents the cargo hauler that appears to violate common sense with every operation it completes successfully. High wing with Fowler flaps generating additional area and camber, spoilers assisting steep descents, and PT-6A engines with reversible propellers make an aircraft exceeding 20,000 pounds operate on strips that look like jokes drawn in grass and hope. 
Beefy landing gear with long travel stroke tolerates punches on pothole strips that would total conventional transports before the first maintenance inspection. The operational secret lives in slow approaches, decisive touchdown, and symmetrical reverse thrust applied before full weight transfers to main gear during rollout phase. The rear loading ramp accelerates cargo loading and unloading cycles, reducing vulnerable time in hot landing zones where mortars have voting rights, and air superiority means nothing to determined gorillas. In hot and high conditions, pilots respect tables crossing, weight, temperature, runway length, and obstacles because miraculous performance doesn't forgive arrogance or optimistic assumptions about density altitude effects. Maintenance focuses on flap pivot integrity, landing gear door seals, and propeller erosion from foreign object damage that accumulates like interest on unpaid loans. The Buffalo equalizes cost per ton mile with medium helicopters while delivering cargo faster with greater range and lower complexity that matters when spare parts arrive by donkey three months late. In humanitarian operations, the Buffalo became synonymous with fixed wing helicopter concept, entering, landing short, offloading water, fuel, vaccines, and evacuating wounded where 500 to 600 feet of flat ground represents total available infrastructure. But if the Buffalo impressed with cargo capacity, the next design took high altitude performance to altitudes where jets fear to climb. What do you do when your military needs to supply mountain bases at altitudes where thin air chokes conventional twins into useless, expensive lawn ornaments? Soviet designers raised the engines above the wing in a configuration so unconventional, Western analysts initially thought reconnaissance photos showed construction errors rather than intentional design. This high altitude specialist rewrote the rules for hot and high operations. The Antonov AN-32, engineered specifically for heat and altitude, elevates Ivchenko AI-20 turboprops high above the wing in mounting configuration, delivering benefits skeptics dismissed until operational results silenced criticism. This arrangement delivers clean ingestion on dirty strips, permits larger diameter propellers, and sustains aggressive angles of attack without ingesting gravel that destroys turbine blades and ends missions before they accomplish objectives. The wing with high lift devices and large rudder guarantees control at low speeds, where other aircraft would already be stalling into smoking holes, and accident investigation reports. Reinforced landing gear accepts sink rates exceeding those of regional twins, designed for a comfortable passenger service on maintained runways. In performance terms, excess power available compensates for density altitude on high plateaus and hot valleys, maintaining climb capability where others would surrender to physics and admit defeat before attempting takeoff. Procedures demand power maintained during approach, touchdown at planned point, and immediate reverse thrust application with careful attention to asymmetry that transforms manageable landings into uncontrollable ground loops. Center of gravity must remain within envelope limits for rotation on short strips, where miscalculation means canceled mission or worse consequences requiring casualty reports. In Himalayas, Andes, and Africa, the AN-32 connects locations ignored by jets while replacing vulnerable convoys that offer insurgents target practice opportunities they rarely miss. Field maintenance addresses propeller vibration, duck seals and landing gear anchor points that take punishment from operations conventional aircraft would never attempt even with gun to pilot's head. While the Soviets conquered altitude, Australian engineers focused on a different challenge entirely in their unforgiving outback. The Australian outback doesn't forgive mistakes or tolerate excuses about runway requirements when the nearest paved strip lies 300 miles away and the patient needs evacuation now, not next week. When your flying territory includes more venomous creatures than people and weather that kills the unprepared, you need an aircraft built for function over form and survival over style. This utility workhorse proved that honest engineering beats sophisticated complexity when crocodiles outnumber mechanics. The GAF Nomad, created specifically for Australian outback operations, privileges functional reliability over aesthetic considerations that matter in boardrooms but mean nothing in red dust and scorching heat. The technique remains straightforward, requiring slow approach with residual power, planted touchdown, beta or reverse thrust application, and taxi power to avoid burying the nose in soft terrain. The aircraft accepts multiple mission profiles, from flying doctor service to light cargo transport with contained operating costs and simple maintenance possible outside hangars that don't exist anyway in locations where Nomad operations prove essential. The type's history includes structural service bulletins requiring inspections and reinforcements, reminding operators that rough strip operations extract payment from airframes with interest compounding over time, like loans from patient creditors. Operated within weight and speed envelope limits, the Nomad fulfills its promise connecting places without airports using 10 to 12 passengers, grass strips, and minimal logistics. 
It represents the utility vehicle carrying civilization to locations where GPS shows nothing but dust, kangaroos, and occasional evidence humans once attempted settlement before heat defeated ambition. The Nomad proved that simplicity, reliability, and honest capability matter more than performance numbers impressing magazine editors who never flew beyond controlled airspace. While Australia demanded outback capability, NATO wanted something entirely different for Cold War contingencies and bombed out Europe. Picture Cold War scenarios where Warsaw Pact bombers just cratered every NATO runway within 500 miles, and your mission demands resupplying forward units using whatever bomb damage strips survive the initial attack. Italian engineers designed specifically for this nightmare, creating a tactical transport that treated destroyed runways as minor inconveniences rather than mission killers. This was the aircraft that said yes when every sensible pilot said impossible. The Air Italia G-222, conceived for NATO operations during Cold War tensions, was born specifically for bombed runway operations that would ground conventional transports immediately. High wing with deep flaps, spoilers, and turboprops with conjugated reverse thrust enable steep approaches, short touchdowns, and minimal ground roll, even when craters mark where smooth asphalt existed yesterday. Wide, long travel landing gear handles controlled impacts essential when gravel replaces asphalt and maintenance crews work under artillery fire, rather than comfortable hangars. The rear loading ramp accelerates cargo cycles, reducing exposure to mortar fire that doesn't care about flight schedules or cargo manifests requiring bureaucratic signatures. Install operations, flight crews train symmetrical reverse thrust application and directional control at low speeds because asymmetry transforms kinetic energy into dangerous yaw that kills crews who hesitate or miscalculate power settings. In Balkans and hot theaters, the G-222 delivered ammunition, food, and evacuated wounded where trucks couldn't pass and helicopters cost too much or drew too much fire from enemies with modern weapons and ancient grudges. When missions demand arriving, offloading, and departing before enemy forward observers finish calling coordinates to artillery batteries, uh, the G-222 delivers exactly that capability every time. While NATO prepared for European warfare, China faced entirely different challenges in provinces where infrastructure remained theoretical concept rather than practical reality. How do you connect provinces spanning thousands of miles when paved roads exist mostly on planning maps and budgets disappear into corruption faster than rain into desert sand? Chinese pragmatism answered with an aircraft so honest about its mission that sophistication took permanent vacation. This represents aviation stripped to essential purpose, connecting people who need connection using whatever flat dirt presents itself as runway. The Harbin Y-12 delivers pragmatic Chinese response to remote provinces where theoretical infrastructure defeats every conventional solution proposed by consultants who never left comfortable cities. High wing with large area, generous flaps, and extremely low wing loading reduce takeoff and landing speeds to values that seem impossible until you witness actual operations on strips barely qualifying as intentional clearings. PT-6, a engines guarantee global parts availability and effective reverse thrust that matters when stopping distance determines mission success versus explaining failure to unsympathetic officials. The combination of wood and metal in initial versions reduced costs and facilitated field repairs far from industrial centers where spare parts arrive on schedule existing only in optimistic planning documents. Flight planning accounts for density altitude, wind, strip condition, and obstacles with pilots choosing conservative reference velocity and beta range immediately after touchdown. The Y-12 became logistical artery in Africa, Asia, and Amazon regions, proving that project honesty and possible maintenance outweigh sophistication when runways represent optional luxury rather than guaranteed infrastructure. Between expensive helicopters and bogged trucks, the Y-12 occupies the niche with ruggedness that became routine in isolated villages, where survival depends on connections the modern world takes for granted. Which stole capability impressed you most? Drop your thoughts and comments and share knowledge with aviation enthusiasts globally. Did these short field secrets change your understanding of tactical aviation? Smash that like button if you appreciate engineering that defies conventional wisdom. Want exclusive content exploring more military aviation innovations that changed warfare forever? Subscribe now and activate notifications so you never miss investigations revealing what makes legendary. Aircraft truly exceptional. Watch the videos appearing here on screen and stay with us. Bye bye.